something different this week, everybody. Merry Christmas. It is Christmas, which is why we're all dressed festively. Very Christmassy, yeah. all of us. Um, well, Kevin is actually Christmassy. If you look at his outfit, he is dressed like the guy from Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. That is exactly what he wears. It's not exactly what he wears. <laughs> it's, pretty close. it's pretty close. He has a blue sweater. <laughs> yeah, he is a blue sweater. But it has it's the zip up <laughs> turtleneck sweater. I don't, even, my, think, my I don't even think he you has know, a zip up in the movie. It's you know, there's a it's character. Oh, it's has a broad. A it's a crew neck. No, dude, he's got. He for sure has a turtleneck, dude. He has a neck like that, dude. You're dead wrong. You're the mayor of Wrongtown. Huh. <laughs> 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 Something different. We're doing something festive. We've uh, done Christmas specials in the past. And we're so bringing Christmas back. We're bringing Christmas back. You know, not a lot of people celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this day. This video was uploaded, so we wanted to make sure that we put the Jesus back in Christmas. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's about. That's what it's you about. You can't spell Christmas you, without Jesus. What we wanted to do to bring the Christ back into Christmas is we are going to be giving the gift of gifts because that's really what Christmas is about is is getting presents, giving presents, friendship, love. And when you're naughty, you get nothing but cold. So today we're going to be finding out which one of us has been naughty and which one of us have been not naughty. Spoiler, we've all been naughty. Each person had a movie selected for them by the rest of the group that we figured would be the most painful and suffering inducing film that they could possibly watch. Yes, the and cold. The and cold. then we all sat down together as a group and watched every single last one of them. Yep. Spoilers, we all suffered every time. We all suffered. Yep. We, we all got cold. Like there was all, nothing but cold. There was no. We all, we all got cold. We all had to eat it. First movie we we all watched together was for Samuel Slade. The way we can start this off is I guess the three of us, since we selected this movie, Keegan, Kevin, and myself, we will explain why we chose this movie for Sam Slade. Out of all of us, Sam Slade hates hates, hates found footage movies. You forbade them. I did forbid, um, I, I said they were outlawed. Yeah. They were forbidden. The movie that we're gonna be watching first in this Christmas season is none other than Infrared. The movie from the people that made the Christmas tapes starring Greg Sestero. It's also a found footage horror movie. How many times are they gonna make movies? I've made him watch so many bad found footage movies he despises them completely. Why not get a found footage? Why movie? not just play it on easy mode? That is playing it on easy yeah, mode. Yeah, it's a particular you, it's stroke of just... genius. You did pick one from the worst <laughs> filmmakers ever. Yes. <laughs> You guys seem like nice people. Yeah, no, I don't care about them as people. Well, they're buffoons. No, you think they're well, bad they're people. <laughs> you don't try to backpedal. You think they're bad people, and they should feel bad. Wes Wheatley here. Welcome to the first episode of Infrared. This is a paranormal investigation show. We have gotten permission to go to Lincoln School. It is an enormous, abandoned building. My interest has always been trying to set that dark realm free. Spirit, we summon you to commune with us in this space. We watched the Christmas tapes over Spooky the Week. If you haven't seen that video, it is a found footage movie that we watched and we all hated it. So we decided that uh, what better way to torment Sam Slade than to go back and choose another film from those filmmakers, a film that predates Christmas Started tapes it and all. features Started the exact same character from Christmas tapes. It has Greg Sestero. Greg Sestero playing literally the same character, Sam Slade. What did you think of Infrared? I thought it sucked. <laughs> Obviously. I knew that before it started. So there's this guy who is supposed to be like on an actual TV channel, like an actual like ghost hunter guy. And how effective is and, that? And it's not effective at all. He, he comes across <laughs> like he's laser gray. Hey everyone, Wes Wheatley here. Welcome to the first episode of Infrared. This is a paranormal investigation show. And right Why now- Why is he not performing like a TV presenter? He should be doing a Zach Baggins oh, it's because he's, he's not a good actor. Oh. That's why. Do you think that was deliberate? Uh, no, it was not. It was <laughs> definitely not. Like, because the script, if there was one, was writing him to be an actual TV guy with his sister, who was also a TV uh, host well, for she, the same job. A, does she have any special powers? They say she does, but now that I'm thinking about it, she never does anything with them. Mm. And she just knows it's a very bad place. Yeah, she just gets like nervous mm -hmm. when there's ghosts around, <laughs> <laughs> which most people do. Which most people do. <laughs> He also gets cold. They all get cold, but she gets a little colder. That was so dark. You don't know. You didn't feel it. So it's that guy, main character guy, awful actor, 
and he's the terrible TV host. His producers are like, you're a terrible TV host. We gotta change this up by giving some, putting someone that you hate in with you. For some reason, they think that's a great idea. And they're like, he's gonna, she's gonna bring the honesty out in you. She's gonna bring... Would you be open to joining the show? I think I can win him over. First of all, I don't think he's gonna want that. I think he will. But I, can, I, I also don't know, like, what would I be contributing? You know, like, what? Just like keep him grounded, some sort of human element. There's... Is I don't think he's supposed to be playing like a real producer. Is that the character? I, I think like, so. I think so. So this is this is not the guy's own YouTube channel. He is being hired. Thanks. Let's go to HGTV, dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I think it's that's my. This is supposed to be. I, I mean, I don't. So it's the point. The point of this show is. To hunt ghosts. But is Which it is to like? Is it to help him? Like, is it going to end up helping him? I think it will help him and helping people. I think he wants to help people, honestly. The producer character if... should be like the producer dude, the director. In if, if he was a little bit more exploitive. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like he should yeah. be like trying to manipulate the situation so that it plays out in his favor. Real ghost finder in you. And we're gonna go to Greg Sestero's house. Well, it's a school. Yeah. Greg Sestero's house school. <laughs> it's, Greg's, yeah, it, that he it, it's so baffling because they have opportunities for character development with these characters because they're characters we've seen before you have the producer so i have this idea i think i can convince him but if would you be open to joining the show the very similar character in ganjam haunted asylum then i i really like that character in ganjam yeah. in ganjam he's pushing them he sees that paranormal stuff is happening but he doesn't care, he wants the views, and he's like sweeping stuff under the rug because they're getting views. Whereas this producer- He doesn't seem to be thinking about anything. He He's just like a moron. Like he might be the dumbest character in the entire movie. He sees that these siblings are incapable of like talking to each other and is like, dude, you know what you mean? You need your sister here. She'll calm you down. Even though you've both said independently that you can't be in the same room together. <laughs> would it not be nice to hang out with your sister again? No. And... no, it would not be nice. Otherwise, I'd have her here. I'm, I'm not nice. helping. I'm not helping by being here. He doesn't want me to be here. I don't want to be here. He's going to help him. How? He says his goal is to like ground him or whatever by bringing the sister on. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, what? That wasn't his issue. His issue is that he sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Whether it's not written in or not, he is, he is a terrible host and nobody likes him when they show up. When he shows up to people's houses, they don't want to interact with him. And, and this is kind of what I was saying with like the layers of, of like, I can see the nugget of the idea is if you have this character, he, maybe he, he has hosted stuff before on his personal YouTube channel and now he's in the big leagues. It's big, because that's what the, it's trying to do. It's trying to be like- There is no progression. Television. There should be a difference between this is produced by a network television program or a network TV studio. And this is like the behind the scenes slash like just what he's like off camera. Um, There's no difference. Ju just so that we don't drone on too long about it, I'd say just my main thoughts is that I thought somehow they put even less thought into this movie than Christmas tapes. I thought the Christmas tapes was the bottom of the barrel. No thought I'd always put into making that one. And somehow they put in even less thought for yeah. this one. Cause I'm watching it and there's like jump cut after jump cut. And I'm oh, like, yeah. they didn't even try to shoot this in a way that was organic and felt right. The jump cuts aren't like organic where it's like, oh, that's a passage of time. Like they, they cut that cause there's time involved. It's literally it takes our cut into. Well, cause they, yes. they did it on the first take. The only way to have a jump cut in like a natural way in your found footage movie is for it to not literally be the next thing the person's supposed to be saying. Like if I say something to Kevin and then Ke Kevin's response comes straight after a jump cut, it doesn't make any sense. Cause you're like, wait, what happened between there? Why Why would they cut? But if Kevin says something it? and then we cut and he's on something else, then it's like, okay, Pat, something has happened in there, that. There's also a super easy way around that. And that's either to do two cameras or if you don't have two cameras or you only, you only have like one camera person, you just do the same thing again from a profile thing, kind of acting like you have two cameras. You know, for this movie, they they factored in the camera person. They only have one camera person that's kind of written in, but it's like, See, it's that's the thing. dumb if you're limitation. Right, if you're, you're right. writing that in and you're limiting yourself, then you can't do what that you did. Or just cut to B-roll. Yeah. Get, yeah. get a get a shot of, the, of a flower or something. Spooky drips. Yeah. I will say, and this will be my final thought uh, on, on the movie, is that uh, I take back the thumbnail for the Christmas tapes. I am sorry for every bit of slander I did towards the Nostalgia Critic because the Christmas tapes is better. He's correct. Uh, the Christmas tapes is better than Infrared. That is damning the faint the praise. Nostalgia Critic. There is improvement, which actually I, the Grinch in me got mad when I saw that. I was like, 
Oh, they are improving. I, I want them to fail worse and faster. <laughs> I actually missed the Christmas tapes while I was watching yeah. it. I would rather be watching that. Which is I so insane. <laughs> and I ba I barely enjoyed that film. Yeah, no, there's there's a couple good moments in Christmas tapes. There's only one good moment in this one, which is when they... Oh Kevin God. just saved my life. Dude, you're, you're so forced strong. Him. You forced yeah. him to do it. He's been working out, dude. The only good moment in it is when they somehow stumble upon the old GoPro that was hidden. Like, <laughs> uh, they just like... I feel like that camera wouldn't capture anything. It wouldn't. What? That's what she's like, I gotta find a good place for this camera. How about the corner and what? underneath something? You fucking idiot. It's infrared so it can see through walls. We found another one of these cameras. Sitting oh, like, oh, oh, that's cool. You get Something so stupid just happened. They oh, found her other camera. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. And I was prepared. I, 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 I was like, you, trying to prepare myself for it. Because I was like, why would they, why would they have that? Just, the only way it could have been found, and if it made sense, is if someone like, tripped and fell over. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and like, there's I thought like, that's ex that's how they had to do it. Oh, dude. Underneath them. There's a GoPro in this impossibly... This impossible spot to find. And when she found it there, we were all like, that's why would she put that she there? She put that there, and, and I was like, that's not going to record anything. She put it in, all you can see is the floor if you were recording from that. It's like uh, so low. It's underneath a drinking fountain, an inch above the ground. <laughs> she, she's going through and she's like, I gotta get some, I only have two GoPros. I have to get really good angles of this thing. Okay, I'm gonna put one up here. It's like, cool, all right. I mean, that, yeah, uh, bird's eye view. And she's like, and one on the floor facing down <laughs> underneath, the, <laughs> underneath, the, just in case, just in case That's I want to get footage of nothing. But that one is the one that captures the plot twist. Oh, oh what the fuck? Holy shit. Somehow it gets a shot of like, like the, the it doesn't make any sense because the, the the drinking fountain would block this 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 uh, thing that happened. But the only cool moment is when they're watching the footage and you see Greg stare carrying the the the, the, the chick's body or whatever. Yeah, that's and a you're cool like, moment. there you go, boom, that's a mic drop moment. One thing I will say about the improvement, they have the character that I think is like a progenitor to paranormal parody because the protagonist of this movie is also a paranormal investigator. He is a hack, but he's not funny. There's so many bits throughout he's our a screen. Hack, but I don't know if he's written to be a hack. There, he's, he's a little bit a he's hack. A little bit because he kills the, the previous, they, they mentioned that he's killed someone during an exorcism. Is that what happened in the beginning? No, no, killed no, no, no. Her? He, he didn't kill her, but the demon was like, oh, he, he killed, killed them. You killed that person. And it's heavily implied that's why his sister has stopped working with him. It's because he fucking killed someone. <laughs> that's what happened? Sister. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, they should have that's an that. interesting Backstory. That Die, demon. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've seen The Exorcist. <laughs> he just saw The Exorcist three. <laughs> saw The Exorcist three. Well, you blow him away. <laughs> But that's, that's a funny bit that you could do in a movie is if he's going through his exorcist kit and it's like holy water, you know, a cross. This is my Bible. It's annotated to specific oh, verses. A and there's a, just a <laughs> snub revolver. <laughs> oh, and that's my holy handgun <laughs> that banishes demons with one blast. Like, yeah, this, <laughs> this, this isn't working. Final what, thoughts? I, well, I, I would just say let's dissect how, how that, successful that is, were you guys. Um, I'd say not as successful as the other picks, in my opinion. I don't want to spoil anything, but I think mine was a... Not that it was a weak pick, but I think it was weaker than the ones we've given other people. I, that's not, we were joking a lot while we were watching that movie. Listen, dude, that that's part of it, dude. Mm. If, if I can deflect it so, by, by making fun, by, by goofing on the movie. So, so how many coal eggs did you eat? <laughs> coal eggs? How many were there? Out of 12. Out of 12, yeah, it's how many coal well, eggs I ate 12 you? for sure. I ate oh, 12. Oh, well, then that's a perfect score. <laughs> that's a perfect score. <laughs> wow. I make that can you guys, three times. Can you guys in, feel the festivity? The that, that was so, look at the snow overlay I'm putting on the, on the so movie. This, this is coal. different. This is different. This is this different. Is different. <laughs> and I feel the Christmas flowing through me and I feel like it's time to move on to the next movie. <sighs> now you've prepared some words. I have prepared some words, because yeah. it's it, you need, there's things you need to know about the movie before you watch it. There's things, it, it's important, important details. What you are about to watch is one of the greatest films of the last decade. <laughs> it was released- People have said that. It was released in 2015 among contemporary landmarks like The Hateful Eight, Mad Max Fury Road. This film has won more than 20 awards across countless film festivals. Is this Spotlight? Big and no. small, around the country oh, yeah. and around the world. What is about to happen? <laughs> it has the same score on IMDb <laughs> as Snowpiercer, Mean Girls, <laughs> Tropic Thunder, Dread, 
The Master. So this must be a really good movie. <laughs> Black Christmas, Day of the Dead, Seven Psychopaths, Blue Ruin, and Blade. I love all those movies, so this has to be a really good one. It's counted in the 1001 movies you must see before you die list. And it was shot entirely on an iPhone. Please welcome Tangerine. No! Oh, no! So what we were looking for was one, something up its own ass. Yeah, something pretentious. For something sure. shot terribly. And something that people really liked and bought into the crap. That might have been the single most that important. Was, that was the one. Was, that might have been. I mean, something boring. <laughs> yes, that's important. We were all bringing kind of different things to the table. And honestly, we kept throwing stuff out. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah black and white. Just keep following that. Keep following that. And then our, our conclusions kept leading us to Roma. We were like, no, we can't do Roma. And so we, like, every well, time we I tried to follow I, I a trail. I was throwing darts at a picture of Roma. I was like, Roma is the one. Roma, but not to Roma. Find Roma. Under the skin, but not under the skin. Yeah, exactly. Like, how how do you do this? How can you recapture this this magic? And then Sam Slate, out of the blue, while you were the mastermind behind uh, his suffering, he was the mastermind behind <sighs> your I, I knew we were compatible. <laughs> I, I didn't even watch the trailer. I knew it was the iPhone movie. And I was like, no, it's worse than black and white shot on a phone. Shot on iPhone. He yeah. did say that. that. Yeah. He did say that. With a movie like this, it's a gamble. Uh, because, a lot, like, if you go back to that Roma review, I didn't hate Roma when I first watched it. I watched it, and I thought nothing of it, really. I was like, okay, that, I didn't like that very much. But I didn't hate it. It wasn't until afterwards that I started seeing people talk about it. and it's shaving cinema. And, and seeing crap it's like that. It, it was literally, I watched a couple of top ten lists for that year, and I was like, Roma, Roma, Hold Roma, on a Roma, second, Roma. everybody. I didn't know the premise of Tangerine. I knew that it was an iPhone movie. I knew that people liked it, but uh, those two facts have always turned me off of it. Like, house. I don't. When the movie started, I was immediately like, what, wait, okay, what is even this fucking about? Okay, so it's about trans prostitutes in Los Angeles. And my first thought was, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. It's an interesting There's premise. No other movie like that. With interesting characters. Oh, this movie, honestly, to me, I think this movie would be sweet if it was made like an actual movie. If it was made by 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 human beings with, with yeah, eyeballs. if they made it like with like <laughs> like if A twenty four put out this movie and they filmed it, yeah, for real, like they tried, like they tried, they tried. Um, it would probably be a good movie. And then even in the first couple minutes, I was like, okay, the characters are interesting, the premise is interesting. And the acting is really solid. Like I don't, I don't, I didn't do any research. I probably should have, because I, I don't know what nature this movie was made under. I don't know if these are actors or if like this is one of those movies where they're kind of actors, but they're also kind of just playing themselves. I kind of got that I vibe. Think it's that. Either way, like they're great on screen. This is an inter interesting premise, and this is like all great. All that goodwill faded in about forty-five seconds to two minutes because it starts off interesting enough where you have this uh, the protagonist, she just got out of prison and she finds out her boyfriend's cheating on her. And I'm watching it. Which is already Beyonce. a funny setup because- her fian Well, that we don't know that. Because that's, she's, that's, that's plot, that's she's plot a hooker twist. and her fiance is a pimp. Yes. And you're kind of like, okay, well this is already like this own, its own wild story. The biggest problem that this movie has, and I, can see, I, I saw very quickly why it was chosen for me because Everything that was done well was completely squandered by a terrible execution. Mm -hmm. Like, we, even in that first scene when they're setting everything up, the shot composition and the editing is just so distracting that, like, it's fighting your ability to get engaged in the story this that they're the telling. Th this is the thing that I've said about Tangerine since I've seen it, whenever I've had to fight anybody on it, which is very rarely, because nobody's seen this movie. Yeah. They just, they just, the people that have, a lot of people that have are like, dude, it's actually really good. The problem with it is that it's like, pushed up as like, oh, it's this really, uh, you know, small story, small scale, and it's shot on an iPhone, and that's what makes it great. The shot on the iPhone factor of it is what ruins it. Yeah. And when I first heard about it, I was like, that's not a bad idea. And you know what? Uh, it being shot on an iPhone, like that could be cool. Maybe, yeah. maybe, it that's crazy. We live in a world where you can shoot it on your phone now. And then you watch it, and when I watched it the first time, I was like, this looks like crap. This is shot on a phone. I, like, I also, if you would have made it, and I'm like, I can't, I can barely, I know it's shot on a phone, but I can barely tell. It's, it just yeah. feels like a good movie. I'm just watching a movie. Uh, no, you're watching it, and you're like, they are completely limited by the fact that they're shot on I, I would also yeah. say, if, it, if the iPhone thing wasn't a choice, because we looked up the budget while we were watching it, and we were like, okay, the budget's not zero. You know, it's bigger than iPhone. So the iPhone thing was a choice, which is partial. Like if the whole thing was made by by like college students or, or people with no money, 
and that was part of it. Like there were just technical errors everywhere. Like, you know, maybe the audio was a little dodgy in some other places and it, and it was just completely a technical like budget limitation and it was made by nobody's. Then I would have a little bit more grace for it, but they have a cop car in it. They have lots of locations. Yeah, with- isn't it 90,000 that was spent on it? Yeah, and, and, and you know... I think it was 90000 s- Some people might hear that and think that is really low, and it is really low. That is super low, but um, for what the product you see... Google short film shot on a Canon T5i, a camera you can buy for $200, and you'll see stuff that looks better than Tangerine. So I, I And that's where I'm coming from with it, where it's like if the iPhone was strictly a that's all we had limitation, yeah. and, and yeah, the movie yeah. was shot for $2,000. And even then, I think I might have forgiven the iPhone footage if it wasn't for the composition and the editing. The editing might be the worst part of this movie. Yeah, the editing's bad, the composition's bad, and the fact that it's on a phone, it the just- Everything's in focus. Everything's in focus. There's that shot when they're in the donut shop in the beginning, and I'm like looking out the window, and I'm distracted because every time it cuts between the characters, the continuity is different because there's just like different people in the background, and I'm like watching them, and it's just so distracting. The way it's framed, you see so much of outside, and I, it's just distracting and off-putting in a way that doesn't help what they're trying to do. And, and then they'll have these gimbal shots where the phone is just on a gimbal or a steady cam or something where it's blasting this like loud techno music. And, oh God. And it just cuts in and hard cuts out like it was made. It, it reminded me of something that someone that we went to community college would have made. With the uh, footage you're getting from the iPhone, they're also like, you know, we do have to try to make really cinematic shots. They color graded it. They color grade it and, and they do this stuff where like they're, they're you know, moving the camera around crazy. Yeah. And I could see someone with no brain watching that and be like, that's so, they're doing so much with an iPhone. Yeah. All, all they're doing is getting a selfie stick and raising it up to the top and they're going over their actors like this. Yeah. And then you're supposed to be like, no, it's like a helicopter shot, but like not. A, a lot of those move too fast and made me a little nauseous. Yes. Yeah. And here's the thing, you can do, if you just had like a good looking movie and you had like nauseating shots like that, it would work. Like there are movies like that, that I'm watching it and I'm like, this is purposefully ugly right now. Yeah. And it works. And then I, I think, all of that, all of that could have been forgiven if overall the narrative really clicked into place. Because as it was going, I was like, okay, I like the characters, I like the performances, but after the first two scenes, it starts to meander and it becomes that kind of slice of life thing, which I'll be honest, like this is why you guys nailed it. That's just not my type of movie. Like even if this movie was doing everything right, like the kind of just boring, we're gonna be looking at these characters and they do nothing mm. and there's no point to there's it at no the end. Point. That's like my least favorite kind of movie. And so I was just kind of checked out for a lot of it. And, and it kind of starts to like ramp up towards the end where you're, you're seeing these different characters and you're like, how are they gonna collide? Well, that's, when you, that's when you realize that the movie is executed by morons. Yeah. Because that that's when the tone doesn't make sense. Well, that's, and, that's where I'm going is, like, is the finale is what fucks this movie yeah. over so bad because you have all these branching storylines and with any Love Actually type movie, you got, uh, or Magnolia type movie, it's like, how do we wrap these storylines up together at the end? Like, what? How what, do they all either how physically do they convert converge? or thematically convert? Yes. Or both. With the good ones, the good examples of those kinds of movies, like Magnolia, they converge and the tone is the same across the board. Yeah. Like, Tom Cruise's story in Magnolia is wacky and funny the entire time until the end when it's not. Y- the usually end. the best ones are, they're, they're exploring how different characters are reacting to and exploring the same concepts. In this movie, um, really their, only... their tones are like screaming over each other for screen time. Like, ah! Th- there's ah! really only two ah! plots. Ah! Funny! Funny, You're like, no, 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 sad! 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 And you can't hear either, because they're both screaming. <laughs> but there's really only two plots in the movie. One is of the protagonist. She's looking for her fiance. And then the other is of a taxi driver who is cheating on his wife with prostitutes. Oh, Trans prostitutes. Cause it's, it's the, yeah, it's the girl tracking down her husband. It's the, the girl that has her like hopes and dreams and they kind of fall apart uh, because she goes and sings. Oh, I don't count the singer one cause she doesn't have a plot. That's why I didn't count her. Cause she's just there. Her plot is, she goes she has that scene. the slice of life. Yeah. On their own. I'm fine with all of them. I like the taxi driver character. I like what goes on with him. A lot of a lot of his scenes are some of the best scenes and in the whole movie. The whole- Get the fuck out. This is the best scene in the movie. <laughs> burning. This whole thing could have been saved. Like, I'm not even joking. If they tied it together with a really good ending, I could have been like sitting here and being like, guys, you missed the mark. It was a good movie. But they fucked 
the ending. The ending is the worst fucking part of this movie. Yo, what's your name? You got this. Now you guys are talking to him in Chinese. She's talking to him in Chinese? Is that what she just yeah. said? So here's the biggest problem with this ending, is that they're like, they have this whole ramping up thing with like real drama where it's like, oh, this guy's family thinks that this guy is like doing sketchy crap in the night and not being truthful about it. And then they have the comedic their lives and they're making yeah. fun of it. And those together don't mix it up. The whole movie doesn't really know when to do comedy and when to do drama. And we love movies. We, we've said it a bunch of times, both on camera and off camera. It, it's, it's funny until it's not. It's funny and dramatic at first, but then by the end of it, it's just drama. Because well, all you realize that, that the funny thing about, you've been laughing at isn't actually all that funny when yes. you actually know this person. The ending should have just been dramatic. Like, like for a movie like this, just make the ending, like, like yeah. stick the landing. Just, just full you can, throttle. You can have it be funny, but the moment that guy's life is ruined yeah. because of his- Because he's also not straight. Yeah, you, well, whatever. <laughs> that's not why it's sad, but. I'm, I'm, no, 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 that, that's, 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 that's like, the reason he's having an affair is he is not straight yeah. and he is locked by his culture yeah. into a marriage with his wife exactly. who he doesn't love. It's, it's a good storyline and it converges with them and you should learn something about everybody when that happens. Yeah. Instead, he has his life fall apart and all the other characters are just laughing at him. And I'm kind of like, and also, what is this like, supposed to tell me? And then they're, they're, like, they're like shouting like, oh, over each too. other and like yeah. it's it's just obnoxious and it's not like like it lacks cohesion. Like it's just kind of like Bleh. also it keeps cutting back to the yeah. store owner and, and it's like supposed to be for comedic effect. Yeah. And it's like this is also the dramatic scene and you keep cutting to comedy shots. There are elements of the actual ending I liked, but there is like subtext and there's layers that like if you want to read into it, it's like okay, it means something to these characters because they they have this moment where uh, the one moment where any trans hate really is relevant throughout the entire movie happens, mm -hmm. and it's just They're thrown very, in very, at the very, end. Are you looking for a party? Oh, oh. oh my god. Merry Christmas, you <laughs> Which was also frustrating, because it's just kind of like, if you want to have a movie about trans characters and like the fact that they're trans is barely an element and maybe they get a little hate, that's fine. Throw it in earlier too, though. Like, have it be something that like, you don't want to just come up at the very end. Because I, I get it, because I, I can see them writing it. It's like, okay, I don't want the whole movie to just be about how being trans sucks because every, everyone's just like boo trans. But at the same time, you can't just have it spew out out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, yeah. Uh, which is what they do. And her hair gets messed up too. So they go to the, the clothes washing store. Laundromat. Sure, that's how he's never store. been poor. <laughs> the clothes you can one. tell he's like, the, 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 the river, wherever the poors go to wash their clothes. I don't know where one is, but they exist. I, I've been inside of a laundromat, guys. A clothes washing place? <laughs> a clothes washing store? Cuts to him, ah. he, he walks into the laundry, he's like, oh shoot, I was trying to go to the restaurant next door. Oh. Like, oh, wrong you way. guys don't do it for me. I have to... I have to stay here? I Sorry, I... Girl, here. It's never explained, which I like, but it means something to her. And I like that. I wish it was set up, but I, you know, it's, there's like layers to it that are meaningful that you can derive. Like there's a, there's a through line. Okay, why does the hair mean something to her? It's part of her identity. It makes her look more like a woman. And it is just like, it affirms what she is. I think the reason there's no setup for that is I think the filmmakers would argue that that was a, an inevitable scene. Like this is always going to happen. But, this, because just by the fact that they are trans. But because it, in, in your trans life, um, out of nowhere, out of the blue, you will suddenly just face this random hate anime. from strangers. Yeah. Right. But as a, as a movie, that's the thing. As a movie, none of it works. Yeah. Like as a movie, the ending where they're making fun of the guy and his sad life well, it's also doesn't it, work. It comes after the scene that is already like this confused emotional climax where it doesn't know if it wants to make fun of the people in the movie or feel bad for it. And then it just hits you with, oh, but this is actually sad like what they have to go through. It's act, like this whole time, I know they were just like laughing at a man for ruining his life. The lady betrayed her and then they had to come back together because they had the same struggle. And that's what they're trying to say. That should have right. been it's the not, entire last yes. act of the movie. Yeah. That should not have been 
It's two it scenes. Comes out th- th- and it happens, and then the movie's just over, and they're like, oh, they made up because they're both trans, and they have this touching moment. And I do like that moment, uh, and I like all the elements. It's just It just happens right at the end. Yeah, the, there's and no build-up for it. Did I totally hate it? Like, for comparing it to other movies, like Roma or, or Under the Skin, I, I think I want to say I found more to enjoy in it in, than, than those movies. If I did have to give it coal eggs that are out of 12, I would probably give it a 12, colleagues out of 12. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah. fair. That's positive fair. score. That's a positive, positive score. score. Positive. Positive. Yeah. So the next one we watched was our pick for Keegan. I didn't come up with it, so I will not explain it. I we, was the master. We chose Crash. This, this, was, this was me. I was very happy with this pick. What is it that but Keegan typically hates? Traditional movies with dumb messages well, that are predictable. The, the, honestly, Mid-90s, that's a classic example. That's a Brian movie. It's a period piece about an obscure, specific it's period kids of time. coming of age. It's about kids coming of age, and it's like meaningful, and nothing really happens. It's all just characters, and like, there's no real plot. I remember hating that Was movie when we watched the it in the theater. If the movie cares more about its message than its actual self, Keegan will not like that movie, no matter what. Ke- Keegan also typically cares less about character in movie, we, like or plot. He cares about plot. I, I do care about story. I'm willing I, to. Like, I actually run with think dumb Keegan, ones. like plot is a big part for Keegan because if something happens in a movie, if a plot point happens that Keegan doesn't like, it will ruin a movie for him. He likes plot that he's not expecting. Yes. 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 He likes plot that is stupid, and he's like, wow, this one is about what zombie dinosaurs? Cool. <laughs> That's what Keegan wants. He does. It's like there's a good plot where you're watching. It's like there will be a lot of great plot or whatever. Yeah. Like he's not going to be into that because that's not plot that he's interested in. Well, that's character. That's what. That's the distinction I'm trying to make is that Ke- Keegan does not care. He doesn't just hate for... Back to the Future for no reason. Yeah. yeah. Character right? driven. No. See, I, I you don't know sometimes. If a movie is very character focused, he doesn't gravitate towards that. You know? I don't have empathy for people. No. But for the longest time, we were going to say Magnolia, and the thing that we pivoted away from was one the length. And two, yeah, it's three hours. if only we could take Magnolia and make it worse. We tried to avoid longer movies because we didn't want it to be a war of attrition. It, like, it wasn't, we yeah, didn't that, want, that Oh yeah, that would have killed damage. me or Alec or really any of us. Just like, you would just pick a movie that's four hours. Yeah. It's like, and you've inflicted so much pain on me over the years. I'd say this was probably mostly your fault, the movie that you guys picked for me. So it's only fair to introduce this movie to you. Uh, it won Best Picture, I believe, uh, in 2005. Yes. Um, it is probably one of the most pretentious movies ever, and it's called Crash. I don't know if I've heard of it. You've never heard of Crash? I had never heard of Crash. Really? Yeah. So Crash is just a, a really melodramatic movie about racism and any other drama oh, white people I'm have. Already, I'm already over it. And uh, <laughs> it's it's like also a bunch of it's like vignettes the, that so are all tied together. Uh, it won Best Picture, and then like everyone was like, that movie's terrible, though. We're always behind this metal and glass. I think we miss that touch so much that we crash into each other just so we can feel something. It has so much to say. It so really I, I, does. I think, I think it's a good pick. I'm excited to watch Keegan Burn. Crash was one of a few that I recommended that was kind of in that same branch that was kind of up its own ass. Like it has awards and stuff. It's rich in theme, but not really anything. There's no else. good plot, no good characters, only theme. Only theme, and that that was an important thing. And honestly, and like, the theme is racism. And, is there. It exists. Yeah, the, the theme is racism exists. <laughs> yes, we'll, 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 we'll go into that. We'll go into that. It's not more. even that's that racism is movie. bad. The movie doesn't have the yeah, balls actually, to the, say. The, the movie doesn't care whether racism is good or not. Like, the movie is just saying that it's there. I think Donald Trump might have said racism is bad more than the movie did. <laughs> Keegan, how did we do with Crash? Uh, you guys did pretty good. Uh, it has the things I hate. It, it's really uh, form over substance. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't even really have a message, and that's. I bet you they think it has a message, but when you watch it, you're like, "What is your message?" You're just like, isn't it obvious? Well, I have to find to explain it to you then. Well, so you might have noticed that Kevin's audio all of a sudden sounds a little terrible. The explanation of that is pretty simple. We took a little break while filming this, and Kevin forgot to put his microphone back on. So we're gonna play a little game. We're gonna see how long it takes him to realize that he's not wearing his microphone and for him to put it back on. And so I'm not going to tell you when it happens. 
We're just going to find out together. So, so Maybe I think, you're the problem. You're the problem. <laughs> I, I have two theories. I have two theories. Yes. Theory number one, the writer is a huge racist and someone told him that to his face and he got really offended and so yep. he decided to make the least racist movie he could. <laughs> While outing himself as a racist in the process. While outing himself as a racist. Ten bucks says she calls you in the car. Wait, 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 wait. You see what that woman just did? You see that? Why? Right, she's cold. She got colder as soon as she saw us, though. And don't worry, there's a, there's two black guys. Well, obviously, they still car. Do we look threatening? No. Fact. If anybody should be scared around here, it's us. We're the only two black faces surrounded by a sea of over-caffeinated white people patrolled by the trigger-happy LAPD. So you tell me, why aren't we scared? Because we got guns? You could be right. So racism is bad, but racists are also, but they're also correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they are like, criminals, of course. Know, but they talk about how it's a cliche. They go, boom. His editor came up with that. It's like, you shouldn't have, if you're trying to prove, sir, that you're not racist, you shouldn't have <laughs> them. <laughs> just, <laughs> you should not have them actually steal a car. It's like, have them say some shit about it being like, like, have it be a thing. But no, no, his his, his, his heart was like, like, have it be a thing. Have it be a thing. Have well, them talk about it. But, but black people do steal cars. So like, <laughs> he's just like, well, what else would they do in this scene? You tell me. <laughs> and then the, yeah. the editor's just oh. like, uh, you could just do something completely different. He's covering racial stereotypes about uh, Mexicans. Well, Hispanics in general, because um, lead black detective's partner slash girlfriend is Hispanic because she's, I'm trying to remember what her parents, one was from Honduras, the other one was from they were, Ecuador. They, he called her a Mexican. She's like, we've been dating for like eight yeah. months and you still ignore Which, the fact I am it, not Mexican. That, that, if the movie was more focused on that, it was more focused on like the it was nuances. More focused. Yeah, it, the nuances of how race can be a factor in ways that a lot of white people are too dumb to recognize. Like if that was, a bigger theme throughout it. And, and that is a theme. The problem is that the movie doesn't have to say any, like the movie doesn't have anything to say about that. It's just kind of like, this happens and... And Matt Dillon is a hero. <laughs> and the guy that is the most overtly racist yeah, in the movie is a hero. One of the, yeah, one of the most overtly racist and a sex offender. I wouldn't even say one of, he is the worst person in the movie. Oh yeah. He oh, is yeah. like a No, no, I, I was saying most racist. There's just a few extra. Sandra Wolves. Bullock is probably the worst racist in the movie. Yeah, she's pretty bad. The guy in there with the shaved head, the pants around his oh, ass, the prison tattoo. Those are not prison tattoos. Oh really? And he's not gonna go sell our key to one of his gangbanger friends the moment he is out our door. Well, she's oh, a racist God. to Michael Pena who is the best person. He, he is the, the only racist non- to everybody. Yeah. She's just like, those blacks stole my car. And but she, she yeah. falls down the stairs and she has a concussion. Well, even before- <laughs> She falls down the stairs and she's like, my floor is brown and it saved me. <laughs> Sandra Bullock read that script and she was like, that is genius. That's what the only way you can change is if you have an accident. That's what's hard about this movie <laughs> is like, a lot of times we'll look at things and be like, how could they have fixed this? And th this is how my mind usually works. Yeah. It's like, what could, I, the way you fix it, it, don't make this movie. This is a yeah, movie I wish. Like, there's stuff you could fix. For sure. And we could talk about it. There's stuff you could fix. This is like looking at a corpse that was run over 10 times. Yes. Like you're just like, <laughs> could you fix his arm? Sure. But why? The, the movie was made in a time and by a person that was so ill-equipped to make a commentary about, re like so, uh, already one of the most complicated topics that you can make a movie about. And well, it's he, like he the person prepared to make a movie. Say race is a very complicated topic and racism is a complicated yes. topic. The writer of this movie was like, well, race isn't that hard. <laughs> We were clowning on the filmmakers so bad in this one because they're just like, you're watching it, you're like, this is so stupid. Yes. Like, the people that, like, like this is just a bunch of rich white people that are just like, and racism exists, and it's actually always, like, like people's race is the only thing that matters on the streets. Yeah. And it's like, what, that, there's no subtlety here at all. Like, yeah, all, all it is is people and yelling you can, at each other, whether they're good or bad, is people yelling at each other because of their race. And also, you can never escape your race because yes. that's what that's what the every uh, conversation is a <laughs> oh my god pepper <laughs> pepper are you okay i'm remembering the movie executive guy at the end he's like there's a burning car i need to go over there because black people love burning cars yeah. <laughs> and i'm like that's an interesting choice it tackles like police brutality uh, it doesn't tackle it it shows it but then it's like you can get away with it. It touches on the systemic issues that cause it. Like yeah. the, it shows the, them. The good cop 
that that doesn't want sexual assault to happen, but not so much that he says stop sexual assault. He watches it and he feels kind of bad about it. Yeah. Well, he feels in bad about it. You call but like, he goes to Keith David, says Keith David, I don't want to work with this guy anymore. And I, Keith David says, it's because you fart, isn't it? <laughs> you have uncontrollable flatulence. And you're too embarrassed to ride with anybody else. So you're requesting a one man car. All of that stuff is the stuff that's closest to me to working. Cause it's like, it's showing the system and it's showing how the system affects these people. And it shows how even people that are trying to fight against it are like, it's like rushing into a tidal wave where it's like, they, it, it's bigger than you. There's nothing that you can do to stop it. Even the people that like should be on your side, like the black police chief, he doesn't want to lose his, like all that stuff. I'm like, this is, this is all fine in theory. That works until the movie's like, but anyway, he's Matt also Dillon, racist. He's awesome. He's a badass well, it, dude. You he's should got feel a sick bad. dad. It, it, you should feel it, bad for him because he has a sick yeah, dad. Yeah, it fucks that over dad. two different ways by having this full assault uh, fist and racist be a s sympathetic character. I can't look at you without thinking about the five or six more qualified white men who didn't get your job. Now well, we could use our discretion and let you go with a warning, or we can cuff you and put you in the back of the car. <laughs> what do you think we should do, sir? Yo, Gomez, you ready to roll, homie? I want to talk to your supervisor. I am my supervisor. Yeah, what is your name? Shaniqua Johnson. Shaniqua, big fucking surprise that is. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Ooh. They were trying to redeem Matt Dillon, dude. They were trying to redeem him. Dude. He's unredeemable. Well, no, no, he is redeemable. Here's Matt. the thing. <laughs> they wanted to actually have this moment be something is if she screams and he realizes what a monster he is like he's trying to help this woman and yeah, because of his actions she literally doesn't want him to pull her out of a burning car or whatever it was no it? she's the one that's got to learn a lesson <laughs> it's okay Matt Dillon, redeemed. here's what they should have done with Matt Dillon, is that instead of it just being like, by the way, his dad's sick and take back everything you said about him that was bad. Instead of that, you show that, you show that his life is shitty, that's fine. You don't have to be sympathetic towards him. You're just like, that guy just is shitty and his life is stupid. Mm -hmm. Like you, like there's people I know that are like that. We're just like, you're a bad person and you're a bad person because your life is terrible. If you want to redeem him, he has to die in some way. Like he has to show up to save what's her name from the burning car and he either gets injured or he has some sort of life-changing moment there. You don't just or be he, like, he by the way, he is good though. They they show this guy being the worst, most, I, I'm not even, like that scene you can't go where back from he's actually <laughs> assaulted you someone in the street. It's like the that. most disgusting scene in in, in a movie if I've seen recently. If it was just racism, then maybe they could have made something work <laughs> with the, like, like in Three Billboards, right? But if you had that and this and this and this, you'd have been like, no, yeah, it, no, well, you can't redeem him. Because also it's not, so it starts off with, with him getting the, the, with him doing the racist pullover, then the actual assault, and then he has that huge racist tirade. Oh yeah, yeah. The and that, the and that, the well, he calls her first, and, and says then he goes to her and office. Then he goes to her person and then says more awful stuff. And then, then I'm like, he is unredeemable now. Yeah. He's a piece of shit. Three billboards also yeah, does this thing really where, like where all the other characters are calling him a racist the entire movie. Like it's it's addressed in the movie where everyone's like, oh, you are the guy that did police brutality and we all hate you for it, you know? Whereas in this movie, he, he just does it. And there's only one character that cares about it. And then he gets told he farts too much. <laughs> one of the other issues I had with the movie in general is there's too many characters. There, there's too many plot lines and you don't have enough time to develop. There's yeah, but two by the different end, uh, war machines in this movie. But yes, yeah, there, there is. The, by the end of it, you're just machines. like, what, what is Brendan Fraser's character even here for? Yeah, and, and like there are moments like that where it's like, okay, you could have made a point like that. Like, yeah, politicians use race to their advantage, but like you throw that in- That could have been interesting. If you there throw was in a line like, like that in the beginning characters. and then it doesn't have any payoff or, or like, I don't fuck. I hate this movie so fuck. I hate talking about this. It is like aggravating that this movie even exists and that there's a, if there's a single person on planet earth that likes it is, it's Sorry. offensive to hear. This is my least favorite movie that we watched this Same. entire, it is just tone deaf. And the whole time I was like, I, I wish that I wasn't watching this. The like, only remember, remember the, the subplot with the, the Persian store owner? Oh yeah. Yeah. And he went, blam. Oh my God. And I he shot. Michael Pena's kid in the back. Hey, 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 $50? You took everything! He doesn't have it! That's not what? I have it! He doesn't have it! Oh, no! 
Oh, she's no. gonna jump in the way thinking she's invisible. No! But it was blanks, dude, from five feet away. And everyone knows blanks don't do anything. That's how you can't kill yourself with a blank. Yes. The only defense this movie could possibly have is that it's 20 years old. There are good movies about racism that came out. No, that's in what the I'm 90s. saying. Like, like you, like that's the it's only 15. thing you can say is like there maybe they're just. That came out about racism in the fucking 70s. Yeah. You know, like where like it's just like oh, it's tone deaf, but now we know a little better. And it's like that's the, if you could try to defend this movie, that's the only thing you could say. But like this movie just is trash. It thought it was yeah. so smart and progressive, and it's just so. It's the opposite. I'm watching it. I'm just like, you have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, the movie just wants to be like, that, this is this racism is bad. And then no, it doesn't even want that. It just, it just wants to say racism is a thing. Racism and here's a shocking thing that well, happened. That's the most frustrating thing about the movie is that like it doesn't even ultimately say like that. It would be so much more easy to pass a lot of this stuff off if the movie ultimately was just like a bad take kind of misguided mid 2000s version of racism bad the movie. That would have been fine, because by the end of it, you're like, okay, they have all this racism, but they say it's bad. What's this so movie does not say racism is bad. What is so perplexing yeah, at, least, at least Green Book says racism is bad. We're <laughs> crying out loud. What is so perplexing to me is that the movie goes out of its way to try to make you dislike every character by the end. Yes. Despite what, what they've set up in it. Like, the lady that, that Matt Dillon screams at and is racist towards in, at the office, at the very end, she crashes into someone. She starts calling and she's them a racist, racist too. Slurs. Yeah, and I'm like, what true. the heck? Why did you do that? And then the, the Chinese guy they, they ran over, or oh, he like, he's, oh, he ends he's up being a child tra trafficker. trafficker. And I'm like, why? Why did you have <laughs> that? Do you need to have Literally, that? he's just the guy that got ran over in the first scene. <laughs> like, just have that be him. I hate this movie. I hate that I'm talking about it. Fuck, Keegan, do you have any fucking thing you want to finish? I'm, I'm so sick of this movie. I uh, hate this movie so much. Genuinely, wins. Like, this movie's terrible. I, this is the this, only movie with, I, I'm actually angry about this movie i hated it so like this wins this wins if i could give like this wins 12 for me out of coal eggs it's really high up there i really didn't like it i i think i'm gonna give it 12 coal <laughs> eggs because like the entire time i'm like there's all these you characters, ate 12 pieces of coal dude I, they're 12 coal eggs because there's all these characters none of their That's stories their are satisfying they don't really get developed um and every time i'm just like why is this happening why is this happening why is this happening um, yeah, it's it's just bad. It's terrible. It doesn't even have a message at the end. All the right. message is that everyone is racist. The message is that, yeah, everyone's racist. The guy writing it by the end is, is, is just true. His so. editor's like, hey, you're really not sticking the landing on proving that you're not racist. He's like, fine, my thing is gonna be that everybody's racist, fuck you. What it also reminds me of is a song from the musical Avenue Q, uh, which was done by the creators of South Park. And that song is called Everyone's a Little Bit Racist. And it is, a funny song dealing with racism. Yeah. But this is like the shitty version of that where they try to play it serious, but the guy didn't understand what racism is. And yeah. he's like, well, I mean, racism exists. Wait, you're saying it's bad? They there is it. so many like movies out there that do it fine. But how this, many of them are written by rich white people? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like, how, I think the standard Hollywood screenwriter is completely Jeez. incapable. Honestly, though, these Oscar bait racism is bad movies. I don't know what they're, who they're for. They're, they're, the they're for other rich they're Hollywood people. Because, like, it's not, like, we don't like it. Yeah. Like, do do other races like it? <laughs> do other races? Like, do they, do they like, actually, no, no, no. you know, I, I, you again, know what I'm saying? Like, it who, is who's for it for? old rich out of touch white people because yes. for rich out of touch white people that the, it is eye-opening I, 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 I to put myself in the mind of a mid your mom and dad would be shocked oh yeah 100 percent. I, I actually had this thought <laughs> while watching it it is such a classic upper middle class mid 2000s did you know that racism actually exists like to someone that likes this movie what this movie does is it holds a mirror up to them it's showing you the ugly truth about it holds racism. a mirror up to them and they go, <laughs> oh snap, dude, racism's, racism's over it's there. It's not me though. It's not me though. I'm not racist. <laughs> I'm not racist. I watched um, this movie. I'm, I'm not, not racist. I'm not racist. Yeah, so that's who it's made for. It is made, like, I think the intended effect is that you watch and you're like, that was hard, man. Like, that was some hard knocks in the school of truth. <sighs> Anyways, let's, let's continue on to something else. The movie that brought us home. Uh, is going to bring this video home. 
uh, because we needed a pick-me-up after watching Crash. Picking a movie for Kevin, well, as far as teams I was on, it was probably the most challenging. Because Kevin... Uh, he just likes everything. I don't I don't want to say he likes everything, but Kevin sees the value in a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, he, he doesn't get, like, there's, there's few aspects of stuff that will completely throw him off. Yeah. Or he's just like, I don't ever want to see this in a movie. And Kevin's seen a lot of movies. And so that's also hard. Is like, okay, you so try to the think of the worst like, movie. The ones he doesn't like, he's probably already seen. Exactly. You try to think of the worst movie for Kevin. Well, he's seen that and he does hate it. So you, you, you were right, for sure. The movie that Kevin hates the most in this world is Pink Flamingos, the John Waters movie. And so we, we even considered it. We were, Kevin, explain why you hate Pink Flamingos. Yeah, please. Um, it's gross. <laughs> uh, it's disgusting. Um, and not just like disgusting like visually it is because it is visually disgusting it's morally disgusting <laughs> like like it is a, it is a movie that is putrid in 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 every ounce of what it is trying to do and say the filmmaking itself is putrid there's nothing good about it filmmaking wise in terms of the sound the cinematography the acting anything you can possibly think of that's in a movie it does putridly this rage is what i was hoping to <laughs> so, tap into so, so, so they they decided to do Another John Waters. Yeah, hoping we'll, hoping we can re we can re, some re of that. yeah reignite the magic. I'm not mistaken, it's his second. It's his movie. third. It's his third. So uh, there was a little deliberation because he did three movies before he went big with Hairspray. Who the heck watched any of his movies and was like, give him a career? I'm blanking on the the one in between Pink Flamingos and we, we Drastic lost, Measures. What's this fucking Desperate movie living. called? Desperate, Desperate Living. Desperate. Part of the reason between the two of them is odd. Uh, Dramatic Living, dr Desperate, desperate Living. living. <laughs> it's a terrible title. It's not a memorable title. I, I'm i not joking, I'm not doing a bit. I have already forgotten it, and Keegan just said it a second ago. Desperate Living. Desperate <laughs> Living. Pink Flamingos, that's an unforgettable title. There's I'll, nothing, I'll give them. There's no title like Pink Flamingos. Yeah. Desperate Living. You know, you, you think of other titles like uh, Faithful Findings. Faithful Findings. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a Neil Breen title or just like any... Uh, it, I'm too, not gonna lie. Lots, I, of, lots of movies could be called Desperate Living. Yes. I, I always think it's a soap opera because my brain just like says Days of Our Lives, Desperate yeah. Living. Yeah. Kevin, to think of your film, it was actually kind of hard because you've watched so many terrible movies and you don't even usually care. And you have the worst taste. Collectively, we considered what is the worst thing we could pick. So we went with a 1977 film by your favorite director, John Waters. Wow. It's a film called Desperate Living. Desperate Living? Okay. Uh, I've, I don't know much about it, but I have heard of it. Let stuff. me tell you the summary. Um, My goodness. A rich woman tries to kill her husband and runs away with her maid to a homeless encampment. And it is a John Waters movie in a homeless encampment. Yes. That has a lot of potential to be extremely gross. Yes. And unethical. <laughs> so, so, Kevin, what do you think of Desperate Living? I didn't like it. <laughs> it was gross. Mm -hmm. uh, and putrid. It was a lot of rape. Way no. more and Honestly, no rape was necessary. <laughs> um, I, I knew from the first laugh in the movie that it was probably going to be better than Pink Flamingos. Because I didn't find a single thing funny in Pink Flamingos. Yeah, when-, when Not a single second of The it. main character is going around screaming Being about how, dog. like, just like, literally she's just- Like, like She's having a meltdown about literally every second Every of her single life. thing that happens. And even though it's not good, it's funny. And it is annoying. I laugh. It yeah. is annoying to watch, but there were some funny points in that. <laughs> there were funny points. Well, she's like very Homer early Simpson on. or something. Like, like, she's just a cartoon character. She's, she's just... a sloppy, <laughs> horribly written Homer Simpson. Yes. I'm sorry, Mrs. Granville. I'll paint you the window out of my allowance. How about my life? Do you get enough allowance to pay for that? She's a, just an obnoxious Larry David, where like everything is Everything's just... a, a thing. Sorry? What good is that? How can you ever Seconds you have stolen from my life. I hate you. There were actually several moments that I thought very isolated were actually quite funny. The bats. This movie is so hard to pick for me because I agree with everything Kevin is saying. It is putrid. It is hard to watch. Gross. Like, I'm not. not I'm not interested. Maybe not hard in to watch, it. but like yeah, like like it's just kind of like why am I watching this? Yeah. It's, I, it's I don't disgusting. want to be here. It's and profane. It's, it's got it's got just <laughs> profane. Gross stuff that. Shouldn't even be in it. Has a very strong odor. But there is some banger bits in this movie. Oh yeah, there's there, some stuff. There that is stuff like... I'm still laughing about. <laughs> there, like the, the line when she's like, "How's Project Rabies going?" Father, 
How's Project Rabies coming along, Peggy? <laughs> Uh, project, project, baby's coming along. That is a genius line. <laughs> or I just think the next time you see her, she's just dressed like a Disney villain, <laughs> brewing a pot, and I'm like, okay, that's funny. That is, like, like that, that, that's ridiculous. A pot Every single joke about the pot of rabies was hilarious. So I, I would say you guys followed a very a- accurate breadcrumb trail. Like I think you went down the the right path. John Waters just failed us. Like his jokes are more honed. Mm-hmm. He has a more of a specific idea idea of what the tone is going to be. Well, I did not enjoy the movie um, really at all. Mm. There, 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 like, it wasn't the most irredeemable, at least compared to Pink Floyd. Filth. Filth. Yeah. yeah. I, for a moment, I thought it was going that way. Because and the, there, 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 we're building it up. There are things that destroy the well, enjoyment yeah, I, of this even movie. Even in the beginning, which I, I think the first scene is hilarious, every character is kind of just this cartoon going uh, and attending the entire time. By the time. first 15 minutes, I'm like, I want every character to be run over by a steamroller. Yes. Like, I don't yes. want this. There's no levity. There's like, no, it, no, yeah, and everything is at a 10, like you're yeah. saying. Like, it is just, it is. So you don't get to enjoy the 10s, because it's yes. all 10. It's loud, because it's always loud. Yeah. It's uh, vile, because it's always vile. Yeah. And it's profane, because it always is trying to be profane. Yeah. Yes. Whether that's language, actions, well, and everything if goes it, too far. If, if it was not trying to be like, let's go too far, the movie would be good. Yeah. Like, I think that yeah. is what's hindering it, is because they think. Like, I think the jokes in the, the story itself is enough to make it a good movie where you don't need the part where the cop, what does he do? He makes he them tries take their to, underwear yeah. off. He makes them take their underwear off. And he jerks and they, off or whatever. He, he, and yeah. yeah. He, well, he wears he, it and then he comes and then he comes in yeah. the... Like, that stuff <laughs> yeah. is just like, you don't need that for this movie. Like, it's like, sure... I don't know what kind of tone you're trying to set. You've set something, for yeah. sure. Do you need the scene where the the uh, trans person goes to the hospital and gets a cock? It's, and a, yeah. it's a lesbian who becomes At least that's more relevant than like other things. No, like, I, like, why is that? Why are the children naked? I would say he was a trans the entire time because he said before that he like he identified as a male. I think so. Yeah, beforehand. I think they did say that he he, <laughs> he was, was trans. A he male. Just... I need a man. I'm a man, Muffy. A man trapped in a woman's body. Yeah, Mole, but you don't have the same big deal. Ah! And he wanted a cock the entire time. And but he got a disgusting, deformed cock because he forced the doctor to do and, it immediately. Yeah, and like that whole thing just felt so like, this is too far, this is too... Well, because like, I think John Waters thinks it's funny. Yeah. And it's like, no, John Waters, that's not funny. What you're doing is not funny. That's not funny. I think he just likes shocking audiences. Yeah. He's doing it for shock value, not because he well, thinks it's funny. Like, I, he I, thinks I it's think either it's... cool or funny, and I'm, I don't agree with either. I think he <laughs> thinks it's funny. I think that what he thinks is funny is not necessarily the material. He thinks that the reaction is funny. When he sits down, he's like giggling because they're going to be like, oh, this is, this, ah, you know, like, well, they're going to eat poop. And he's laughing at everyone that's like, ah, she's eating poop, you know? Don't eat poop. Don't eat poop. Like, that's what he thinks is funny. Not necessarily the material. He doesn't think eating poop is funny. He probably does think eating poop is that's funny. Like, I don't know. He, he thinks it's funny. He thinks rapes is funny. <laughs> I mean, here's what I will say. Is, here's movie. what I will say. I did a little circle in this movie. It was disgusting. It was there was so much, and it was treated so casually. Yeah, like, it, this it is, was treated like it was a farce and a joke. To the point where, like, in rape being the punchline. Towards not, the like, end of it, I was like, yeah. you know what? It was a little funny when that uh, group of guards drag her away to be gang raped. Like, she's just like, no. Yeah, well, at least they didn't show gang her. Gang raper and then, yeah. and then <laughs> shoot her full of rabies. <laughs> Like that's a funny line, but like that's it. Like all the it's other, so there's extreme. so many rape jokes in here that aren't well, funny. Well, th- that's what I'm kind of saying is like it, it. It got to the point where I think that I was so desensitized to it that by the end of it, I was laughing at it. Even the people that you kind of want to follow at the end, you also don't want to follow them at all because no. they're 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 violent so yeah, The main characters die before the end of the movie. Oh, and they yeah. continue the movie. <laughs> that's actually something I did like about the movie is that that's both funny. of the protagonists die completely unceremoniously for one of them. Like she just dies in a crumbling building. Oh. And then- Close up of her dead body. Yeah. And then they never mention. And then they, they never, never mention even again. mention that she died. And then the other protagonist becomes the villain and she also dies at the end with a gun up her butt. Um, yep, she gets shot she gets in the blasted. ass. She gets straight in the she ass. She gets ass blasted. This reminded me of like early 2000s to mid 2000s 
comedy on the internet. Or I guess probably like, you know, early YouTube is, is what it reminded me of because like the jokes aren't funny. If you Newgrounds. go back and watch it, Newgrounds, yeah. Early YouTube, Newgrounds. Something Newgrounds that uh, a channel's still going that w- if they found those videos, they'd be canceled today yeah. for making jokes about rape. It's not even like they'd be canceled necessarily. <laughs> you just watch it and be like, oh God, we thought this was funny. Like this isn't even funny. They're just saying like the F They're word just a being bunch. shocking. And yeah. Like, just being shocking isn't funny. It's, it's not funny. It, it might've been funny when you were in middle school and you didn't know what a joke was. You just thought like you weren't, you knew you weren't allowed to say the word fuck. And so when other people said the word fuck, that was funny. That's like the, the, the vibe you get for a lot of the humor in this movie. And because it's always there, the actual jokes that are funny are less funny because so much of it is just unfunny garbage. So Kevin, how many how coal, many eggs? coal eggs would you say you ate? Because you didn't like it. No, I did not. Yeah. Definitely ate coal. I didn't eat... Not coal. Presents. Yeah. And no <laughs> presents were eaten. I gotta say, I was maybe 11 pieces of coal. Wow. I I coal. was so certain Kevin was going to do his 8 out of 10 yeah. bit. Wow, I am shocked. Well, we're not talking about eggs. <laughs> we're not we're talking we're about not, eggs, no. dude. My enjoyment levels were different on this one compared to the other three. Yeah. That's what I would say. Oh, I mean, yeah, I, on Letterboxd, I think I gave all of them either one star or half a star. This one, I, I think I gave two and a half. <laughs> I gave them all one star or half a star. I just put watched for that one. <laughs> I, I I gave this one a three. I wish I gave it a watch. I, I, I respect a three. I, I mean, I, I we've been hard on this movie and a lot of it sucks. And I, I, I don't, I don't ever want to watch it. A lot of it sucks it. and I just shouldn't. It's just... It, it was even do most. Honestly, of it. I barely respected your two and a half because that means they did half of the yes. movie right. Movie I would say I yeah, the, the stuff I liked is about half. <laughs> the rabies yeah. stuff is hilarious. That's the thing. Like the jokes that I like are so funny that I'm like, man, it sucks that they're in this movie because the, yeah, I would have all rabies. Yeah, I, all I think I even said about a quarter of the way through before a lot of them started happening. I was, I was like, I, you guys might hate me, but I'm loving this movie so far. And it mm-hmm. it, it kind of goes downhill once they get to the town and a lot of like the. You start getting introduced to a lot of the more annoying characters, but up until that point, like the protagonist, I thought was super funny. Yeah, all the main characters, all the characters are purposefully annoying. Yeah, which is annoying to watch in a movie. You so, succeeded, John Waters. I, I don't want to watch your movie again. Good job. We'll go into um, splash damage. So we'll do this for the rest of them. So uh, let's do Kevin's first. Keegan, so you almost threw up. How, I almost. How would you rate the splash damage? Okay. Or, or how many? What are we rating out? I don't fucking know. How much damage you took? <laughs> right, we'll read it out of a scale of five. Okay. Um, five being a lot of damage, one being very little. That's yeah. A lot of um, honestly, three. I have a very specific trigger for for nausea, which is like uh, hawking a loogie. Mm. It grosses me out, but it's a weird thing that only I deal with. The rest of the movie, it was gross and vile, but it didn't make me physically ill. I've never seen anything quite like it, and I never want to see anything quite like it again. I'm gonna go with a different rating scale. I'm gonna use kind of like starting video game health, like out of 50. Cause that's like, if I'm going by damage, you know, you start at kind of with like 50 health. So um, instead of five, we're doing 50. I'm doing 50. You can do whatever you want. You, I have, you, you only have five health. That's that's your problem. Yeah, that's your problem, dude. <laughs> For me, this one, I would say did about 16 damage. Uh, it, it's like one of those moves that heals you and hurts you at the same time because it was healing actually after watching Crash. Like there, there was a rejuvenating property that it had, but it also was bad for, for my health. There's a well. hit you took with your shield up. Exactly, exactly. I'll also do a different rating uh, scale. Uh, I'll just base it off like how much my, my physical mm. uh, injury would be if it was Which trans- chakras were damaged? Like, <laughs> like if, if I was physically damaged from the movie, like what would that look like? And yeah. I would say barely for this one, mm. to be honest. Okay. I was not- He liked sh- I didn't like the movie. Um, I did laugh a lot at it, but you it like ultimately me. isn't a movie that I'm like, <laughs> just like, oh, this is something I hate. Like it's not like Crash or any of the other ones where I'm just like, this is, I don't want that to ever exist. Um, so I'd say it's like I woke up like sore. <laughs> Okay. Like, so what, what would right. you say the splash damage was for Crash? That was like being hit by a car, I think. <laughs> that felt, that was It's bad. like you were in a crash. That was like I was in a crash. <laughs> I, that That's why it's called crash. Like, I may not walk away from it alive. I am plummeting in debt because I cannot pay my hospital bills because mm. of Crash. Mm. Yeah, no, that's where I'm at with that one okay. for sure. Kevin, Kevin, what's your uh, you, you, damage? You, you, um, yeah. well, 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 my, well, my system is actually going to be based on how wet I am. <laughs> If in a good way, or <laughs> it was like a pussy wet, or or like damp. Like, well, well, it's well, well, we're, we're talking about uh, splash damage. 
So, oh. And I would say uh, I, I, I was not super soaked, but I did get extremely wet. I am mostly wet. Back row of the splash zone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, for me, Crash was Poncho. a critical hit. Like, like, where it's Boss like, just ate you? Yeah. It's, it's just, oh, I just did a critical hit that killed him in one shot. I got one shot. This was a like a 360 no scope. Uh, all my health was gone. This was 100%. Uh, kill it. Tangerine for me, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. I, mm. I found it a lot more obnoxious than Desperate Living. It had decent parts in it, but for the most part, I, I just, I was not invested in any of it. Yeah. Because I've seen Tangerine and I was going into it knowing already what kind of damage it would inflict on me, it was not too unsimilar to like getting c***ed again on Dax. So I'd say it's like that. Like I had COVID already, right. it's pretty bad, banged me up a bit, and now I'm getting it again because I'm irresponsible, not yeah. wearing a mask. Yeah. And I got it again. And I'm like, again. this sucks, but I've seen it before. Yeah. Kevin? I didn't quite get as wet as Crash. I definitely got splashed in the face and it was painful. It got in my eyes and I'm, I'm pretty wet, but not as bad as Crash. So oh, someone was walking by you with their <laughs> concessions at the Waterworld yeah. stunt show. Yeah. You've now moved back a few rows, mm -hmm. so you don't get splashed anymore. And, and then, still and, and then <laughs> and, yeah, somehow a single like beam of water just <laughs> infrared. infrared. Uh, I would say it had zero damage. That was like the opposite. Like it, 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 it missed. They missed. I had so much fun making fun of that movie that like even the things I disliked, I was like, it's, it's a less positive. aggravating hate for sure. It's, yeah. I mean, if I was watching it alone, it would be different, mm -hmm. which is something we've teased we to do about. later. Yeah. It's just to make everybody watch their watch movie alone. Separately. Yeah, because we, we kind of screwed ourselves, like with the concept of this video, we, we may have hurt ourselves by watching it together. But it really made the bad stuff shine. I was going to say, I'd, I'd probably give um, Infrared probably two out of five. Like, it was bad. It was a bad found footage movie. It's definitely on the worst side of found footage movies that I've seen. Which, that's already a very bad place to be. But I've watched a lot of bad found footage movies, so it doesn't offend me on such a deep level where I'm like, I'm kind of used to it. Yeah. I've built up calluses. I've no seen worse. Thing. It's not good, but I'm used to these types of problems in a movie. Um, I got hit in the eye again. It's, it's <laughs> the same thing. It's I, I didn't get eye, soaked. I didn't even get mostly wet, but I got wet and it was annoying. You could tell I, off pretty fast. You're mad that you had to, though. You're like, <laughs> why did I sit in this fucking spot? <laughs> the stunt show is not worth how wet I am. It's not how wet I am. So how do we wrap up such an epic and yeah. different video? We each pick what we thought was the worst one. And if your worst one was the movie that they picked for you, then then that team wins. Out of all the ones we've seen, what, what's at the bottom for everybody? Crash. Crash for me. Ooh. I'm genuinely trying to think of which one I, I hated the most. This is very hard. Uh, honestly, I, I was, not I'm struggling hard all day today. All for me. It is not hard crash at all. It is crash. All day. I think I dislike Tangerine more than Crash. Oh my god. Oh snap. Well, I don't know if we're even going to bring it home then. What's Kevin's uh, least favorite? Well, no, I, I think then then we have to factor in splash damage. Like, that has to be it. Yeah. Is like, it's the one that caused the least splash damage. Well, well most so, so well, damage what, what, on target. What is your least favorite one, Kevin? reason why I'm not saying crash, despite all the reasons being completely valid to say crash, yeah. is that this is the second time I've seen it, you have to remember. I saw it already, this year. I've had the, the same experience and I watched it a second time while drinking. And I can't help but get a, the slightest bit out of joy the fact that a super racist movie exists and it won Best Picture. Like, I think that is so funny. That I, is pretty sweet, it's that turned, rules. It's turned me into John Waters. Like, I think that's funny that someone got away with it. You know, it's it, it's the, it's like the reason that we love picking on big blockbuster movies that have millions of dollars behind them <laughs> is because it's funnier that they fail. Well, Somehow they did, this did that. And and also, and a group and of rich white assholes they all said, clapped for it. They, they approved. Like, they said, thumbs up. The script is approved. All these famous actors read it and they were like this is an amazing script i want to be in it so the, the, like at every stage they had every chance to stop racism <laughs> and they didn't and the oscar goes to crash so i might have to say i enjoyed infrared the least Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. well how about this did did in each selection did the targeted person hate it the most each time? Okay. Did Keegan hate Crash the most out of everyone? I don't think no. so. So that doesn't mm -hmm. that doesn't fly. That's not a contender. Did Alec hate Tangerine the most? No, because Keegan. No, because yeah. Keegan did. did you, I, I hate Crash the most, so no. Did you, did you hate so, Infrared more I than anyone else? I didn't hate it that much. I mean, maybe. I thought it was pretty good, actually. Yeah, like, what would you give it on Letterboxd? 
Half star. Half you star. gave it one full star. Because I did hate Desperate Living's the most out, out of the four of us. I also rated it the lowest. That, that's, that's my thing. It's like I think Kevin. I is think the Kevin winner did because he hates it the most, and it didn't bother us. I just say they all full coal. We all got cold. No one won. No one won. No, no one, one won. won. No we one all won. lost. This was That's a miserable. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, what do you think? Let <laughs> Santa decide. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going home. Bye. Yeah. yeah. That was a good... Merry Christmas. Fuck you. I. No, you didn't ask us to do this, so I won't blame you for making us do this. We, we did this for This ourselves. was our fault. This is actually Keegan's fault. Yeah, if it was my idea. If you want us to do this again uh, yeah, next year... Kevin for making me eat so many donuts. Let us know. Um, and if you it, and if you want us to do uh, to eat presents next year instead of coal, if you I think know, that would be would funnier, that wouldn't be funny at all. You know, yeah. I, I mean, don't tell them. Don't tell them what they want. You know, we could all <laughs> just watch four great movies. You don't know. I, I hope the suffering came across. It did. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it will. <laughs>